I'm so glad to be able to share a message with you all. Today's a very special day. It's Pentecost Sunday. And we celebrate this day because it happened exactly 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. The word Pentecost means 50th day. It is Greek for 50th day. And so we count 50 days from the resurrection of Jesus. See, Jesus appeared 40 days to his disciples and then was ascended back to heaven. And he told them to wait in the city of Jerusalem. And so they waited 10 days. That's 50 days. 40 and 10 is 50. And so on the day of Pentecost, when they were all with one accord in one place, the Holy Spirit descended, was poured out on the believers. And the church was born. And so that's why we celebrate the day of Pentecost. My message this morning is called Inside Out. And it is in reference to the disciples who were sequestered inside for those 50 days. And then finally, when the Holy Spirit came and empowered them, they went out and shared and evangelized the world from the inside to the outside. I'd like to read a passage of scripture found in John chapter 7 beginning with verse 36. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But, he, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus, in this scripture, had come to Jerusalem for a feast. It was called the Feast of the Tabernacles. And it happened in the fall. And it was to commemorate the wandering of the children of Israel. God wanted them to remember that they at one time lived in tents and wandered. And so it was called Feast of the Tabernacles. And so Jesus attended this feast and on the last day of the feast, it lasted eight days, he got up and spoke in a loud voice and said, anyone who comes to me and drinks, Anyone who is thirsty can come to me and drink. So Jesus offers this invitation to come to him and be satisfied. That your thirst can be satisfied. And it's open to anyone, regardless of race or, or religion. There is no restrictions. The only restriction is that you've got to be thirsty. You have to be aware of your thirst. And a lot of people aren't. A lot of people uh, don't get to that place or haven't come to that place yet where they're thirsty. You've got to be thirsty to come to Jesus. And he's the one who satisfies. But if you're thirsty, Jesus said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, shall be satisfied. He gives you that opportunity to find satisfaction in him. You know, friends, only Jesus can satisfy the, the desires of our hearts. We were created to worship him and to love him forever. And until we can do that, we won't be satisfied. So let him who is thirsty come and be satisfied. Something very special happens. Then as we come and drink, it says, Out of his innermost being or out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living, living water. Water that give, waters that give life. 
in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 47, he speaks of, of rivers of water. Jesus or Ezekiel is being led, or led about by a man who is measuring the temple. And he gives Ezekiel this vision. And he brings him out of the temple. And Ezekiel notices that there is a little stream flowing, just a trickle, out from the temple. And then he takes him into the, the stream and he notices it, it's up to his ankles. And then he measures some more and then causes Ezekiel to pass through the stream and then it's up to his knees. Then he measures some more and causes Ezekiel to pass through the stream and it's up to his waist. And finally, one last time, Ezekiel discovers that the stream has grown into a river so deep, so wide, that it's waters to swim in. He can't sound the depths of it. So that is the water of life that Jesus has come to give you and me. And anyone who is thirsty can receive that water of life. I'd like to share a story that happened to me a number of years ago. I can swim, but not expertly by any means. I remember my first experience of swimming in the Gulf of Mexico. I started up close to the beach. The waves would splash against my ankles and then to my knees and then to my waist. And finally, I plunged headlong into an approaching wave and I was committed. I began to swim, swim into the depths. I watched as the shore got and the people on the shore got smaller. And then suddenly I realized I was out too far. And so I panicked and I started swimming back. I worked hard to swim back to the shore. My arms got so tired until I couldn't, I couldn't swim anymore. And I cried out, oh God, help me. And it was at that moment I heard a little voice say, just float. And so I did. I rolled over on my back and I began to float. And then with evenly measured strokes, I began to make a little progress. And over time, finally, finally, I made it back into the shallow part of the beach, close to the beach. Relax and float. I believe God gave me a word at the right time that saved my life. And I hope such a word comes to you today through this message. When God speaks and we listen and then obey, miraculous things can happen. Like on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit was poured out, miraculous things happened. The word of God was proclaimed and 3,000 souls were added to the church on that very first day through the testimony of the disciples. Their message was simple. Jesus suffered and died and was put in the grave, but three days later he rose from the dead. They testified and became witnesses of the things that Jesus had done for them. <laughs> when just before Jesus ascended back to heaven, we celebrated that last week, 
Ascension Sunday, he gave them instructions. He told them to wait in the city of Jerusalem, which they did 10 days, until they be endued with power from on high. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were endued or empowered by the Spirit. And then they became witnesses for Jesus. Then he said, he gave them a, a formula. You will be my witnesses first in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. I think it's a good formula, and it's exactly what they did. Jerusalem first, Judea second, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. And I think that little formula holds true for us today. Now, our Jerusalem is, is our family, family members, ones that we love and that are, we are closest to. They need the witness of Jesus. Many of our family members aren't Christian, and we want them to be. And they may, we may be the only Bible that they'll read, and we can live in such a way that they'll hunger and thirst after Jesus. So our Jerusalem is family. Our Judea is close friends and acquaintances. They need the witness of Jesus too. Who Those ones that, that we uh, uh, are friends with, go places with, see in the stores, in the restaurants, hopefully soon. <laughs> yes, that's our Judea. They need the witness of Jesus. They need to know our story and what Jesus has done for us in our lives. And we need to have the courage to be able to tell them. Now, our Samaria is a little bit different. See, Samaritans were people that uh, the Jews, or early Jews, didn't associate with. And there are people that maybe you just wouldn't associate with normally. But they need Jesus, too. They need the witness. People that are difficult to associate with. And Jesus may use you to touch their lives as well. Don't close yourself off for pe from people just because they kind of rub you the wrong way or, oh, I, I could never be friends with them. No. The Samaria needs, needs God's love too and God's witness, the witness of Jesus Christ. And then there's the end of the to the ends of the earth. And here I want you to I want you to ask God, well, God, where are you calling me? There is a calling that is well out of your sphere of influence that Jesus may be calling you. He'll show you what that is. You're honest and open to that call. It can be a blessing to you to be able to walk in obedience to where Jesus may be calling you. Jesus called Abraham to go out of his home area into a land that he would after give him for an inheritance. And eventually that happened, the land of Canaan. He may be calling you to go and do something that you may be just a little uncomfortable doing. But through God's strength and the Holy Spirit's power, you will be enabled to do God's will and answer God's call. That's my prayer for you today. That you would be endued with Holy Spirit power and be able to answer God's call and see God at work in your life in ways that you'd never dreamed of. And yet, a 
That's what God wants. Thank you so much. Miss you. We'll see you soon. Let me offer a benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory to the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.